Hi everyone. Hi everyone. That's um, it. <laughs> you know, it's it's a lot of shows, like, and it's getting hot, man. Um, hey, well, it, actually, that that little bit of is because of what happened earlier with the prom, and that was because we found out we were using Seth's laptop, which is like it's that crazy section. It's it's like all fritzing out now, and it's all digital. Like it's it's anyway. And by the way, nothing's backed up. So that's right. like another story. And so luckily I was able to figure out how to switch it over to my laptop about halfway through the prom. So yep. that's what we're using So now. tonight's show should be problem free. Okay. Except for my hairstyle, what's happening? It's literally a whirlwind. Um, so listen, I'm Seth, this is James, this is Stars in the House. We do it twice a day, 2 p.m., 8 p.m. That's right. We do it to bring people around the world together. And it really is around the world. We were, someone from Singapore was writing today. Yeah. Um, and we do it for hopefully people are going to um, donate to the Actors Fund. You go to Stars in the House, here's a little process. You go to starsinthehouse.com. For some reason, we couldn't get that as a Gmail account. I still don't know if that's true. But oh, once you, oh, I'll take a note. Yeah. So. But once you donate to starsinthehouse.com, you're going to get a receipt. Send that to starsinthehouse2020 at Gmail. Then when we get a little list, I'm going to send it to one of the stars, the Full Monty, and they're going to read your name while nude. <laughs> we got we to gotta, we gotta theme it with anything to raise money. Oh, my gosh. And speaking of money yes. for the Actors Fund, do we want to explain what the Actors Fund yes. is? Yes. The Actors Fund is a misnomer, which is also my drag name. What work, misnomer. misnomer. And, Thank you. Wait, hmm. I'm, I'm aware of your Stop. work. Yeah. Thank you. Ms. Nomer. <laughs> anyway, the Actors Fund is not just for actors. It's for anybody in the arts. So you're on stage, you're off stage, you're in front of the camera, you're behind the camera, you're all around the country, no matter That's what right. city you're in, you can get help from the Actors Fund to pay your rent, to pay your medical bills. You literally just go to actorsfund.org and you're like, I'm having problems and they will hook you up with money. I mean, it's an incredible organization. However, the way they make money has been curtailed. Right. We no longer have the Red Bucket Brigade, which we always have for six weeks in the spring for Broadway Cares, and Broadway Cares gives money to the Actors Fund. That ended when Broadway and National Tours ended. The big gala they have with Sarah Jessica Parker, that ended. Basically, everything has ended. David, I gotta kick you out of the studio. Oh, Hold on. Can. Wait, can I, David? Yeah, Ixnay, because someone's trying to come in. Thank you. Um, so their, their way of making money, Ixnay. Yet, they have, they're giving out more money than ever before. Right. We were talking Absolutely. to a social worker, she was like, we get 200 applications per week normally. They're getting now 200 per day. So anything you can give, the minimum is $5. So not anything you can give. $5 is the minimum on the website, sorry. Right. Starsinthehouse.com, and the maximum is a lot. And then email Stars in the House 2020. And like I said, full nudity, they're going to read your names. What else, honey? Don't, uh, don't listen to Don't that. listen to him. He's no. crazy. Okay, <laughs> but yeah. it does add up. And I believe tomorrow will be will mark the seven-week point. Why is he yes back on twice? We Actually, well, he has two different... It's two different angles. Okay, two there we go. Um, but it really does add up, and we're up to over two hundred and sixty thousand dollars raised for the actors. Fund. And this is all just people donating ten, twenty. Yeah, like I, th I would say the average donation is probably thirty dollars. So it's been really incredible, and we thank you. And we've lost track of how many shows. I think this may be show number eighty or something. I well, by the way, Matt Stern, thanks for ruining the surprise. Sorry. Oh, literally. Oh, no. I told Matt Stern, whatever you do, don't tell them you're the surprise guest. Like, uh, I absolutely won't. And literally in the private chat where everyone can see, he had a comment, something not even And by the way, that of course, it's a stage manager who's supposed to be all proud. You need to bring him on right now and shame him. Why do you need to bring him on right now? Oh, Aaron, we can hear you. So your tech, your technical. Hey guys, so you're, okay, why don't we hear an echo? Your technical skills are horrible. Okay. So why don't we? Hi, we're stage it. manager for stage, not for literally live streams. I was like, whatever you do, he's like, I've only told my mother. Type, 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 type. He totally did too. Because Jason was doing a sound check right before eight o'clock, and Jason walked away from his computer, and Matt came on, and we were like, "No, no, no, shh, don't tell anybody." Want Jason to hear, and sure enough, okay, I've had it. It's the seventy fifth show, wow. and my nerves are raw. <laughs> so, Matt, is your echo still happening? So, Matt, is your echo? Matt? Still happening? Oh, okay. Take, you know, take up, take those, take those little earbuds take, out. Take, you're not calling cues here. Get rid of your damn headphones. <laughs> G24, go. Be like a normal person and have a laptop in front of you. Oh, that's hilarious. I've had it. Okay, anyway, so today is a reunion of the Full Monty. Oh, my, is it? Funny, funny story is that our social media person put together the reunion, and basically anyone who, had a, anyone who had a double name, she put their picture down. So John Conley, we're all supposed to know he's John Ellison Conley, because there's another John Conley. So there's a picture for country singer. David Yazbek is just one inch away from Tony Yazbek, you know, so his photo was there. Here's what happens: we get we get these email these we get these texts, 
and they say, and they have the images in three different. It's this big forms, on our phone, and we're just like, oh, it's, it's fine. Simple Monty. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's like we don't we have don't, time to check. I don't have time to get my glasses and look at the pictures and the, yeah. you know. It, hopefully, everyone understands it. Yeah. Patrick we're Wilson's photo it was it was Gavin Creel. It's like whatever, <laughs> just off my back. Okay, so in conclusion, I'm going to bring on the composer. And broadcast. <laughs> and broadcast. <laughs> Guys, don't forget to donate. Start yeah, donate, donate, Just donate. That'll cheer me up. Because right now, I'm so hot. I'm so sweaty. And oh, I've had it with everybody. Please. And look at my hairstyle. Okay, so let me please bring on the composer. He was nominated for a Tony for On the Town. You know him as Tulsa and Gypsy. <laughs> please welcome the lovely David Yasmin. Hi, David. Hi, David. I'm already exhausted just listening to you guys. I don't understand where the energy comes from. Okay, second of uh, all, are you a hobo <laughs> eating franks and beans? Isn't that what hobos do? It's like, a beautiful backdrop, though. It is stunning. Oh, peaches. peaches. Uh, organic. I have an endorsement with these guys. Um, <laughs> it has to be on every social media. That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Please buy. David Yazbek, you came from the world of not Broadway. How did you get roped into writing The Full <laughs> Monte? Was it your idea, or did someone recommend you? Um. It was uh, the, the original idea for doing it as a musical, I think, was Lindsay Law, who was at the time the executive, uh, the CEO of Fox Searchlight, who did the movie. Mm. And Jack O'Brien, his best friend, who obviously, you know, great director at the time, was the artistic director of the, of the Globe, the old Globe in San Diego. San Diego. Um, they were looking for someone different, like they didn't want the same suspects whatever you know whatever that meant back then and Stern. who needs sondheim go on and, um, uh sondheim didn't like the idea of doing this as a musical incidentally wow. terence mcnally told me that yeah. i don't know but terence said uh terence said that he was at a party and uh he was talking to sondheim about what they were both working on and sondheim said to someone oh you'll never believe what terence is working on that was the full Monty. That was my first sort of like exposure to uh, to Sondheim. Um, what would it have sounded like? What is a man? Why does he bother her? Because he's a man. Anyway, go on. Sorry. Very, very, very good. Thank you. With accent. Um, <clears throat> so they went to um, to Adam Gettle, who had a uh, Floyd Collins was was so great. Um, yeah. But he knew that it was this, this wasn't the right project for him. Mm. Um, and I had just spoken to him maybe six weeks before asking him. I was so tired of, of touring the East Coast with my band and uh, dealing with live stuff and club owners. Stuff, and, I, and I just asked him, how do you break it? You know, how do you do this? Oh, wow. And because I was thinking maybe I'll take a workshop. He goes, no, no, no. You just do it. Like, go jump in with both feet. Oh, and I, I said, that. well, I said, great, great advice. What the fuck does that, does that mean? I mean, I didn't have an idea. I wasn't going to write the script, you know. And then they went to him for this a month later or six weeks later. And he suggested me. So um, very generous act that changed my life in many ways. Amazing timing. Like if you hadn't said that to him, you wouldn't have been on his mind. I love that. So what was the first song you, you wrote? Well, <laughs> um, I think I wrote Scrap first. I think I wrote the opening number first. I just, I, I, I got excited about the idea. I wasn't expecting to get excited about it. And then I spoke to Jack O'Brien on the phone and he was so energetic and you know, upbeat. And I started realizing that I could write songs uh, that dealt with, you know, stuff that I felt personally for these characters. You just had to find the, you know, the, where it links with the character. And, um, you know, I'm, I was an angry, <laughs> I was an angry, young man and i and scrap came to me very quickly and and uh i mean we we redid it a million times because it was very hard to figure out how that opening number should work um but i i i knew that rhythm and i knew i wanted to hear like a, an anvil in the background or some kind of metallic percussion and so that was the first the first one i think i'm still to this day trying to do scrap yeah 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 how the hell it's so fast how did anybody ever do that can you do it yeah, of course. I, I mean, I had I did the demo, you know, 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then the other six guys on this call can all can all do it too because they all have to do it. Um, I don't have the jaw flexibility. All right, I'm gonna call these clowns in. Not what I heard, Seth. David, I'm taking you off screen because of your attitude problem, and because you're not Tony Asbeck, who I who I actually asked for, and he was not available. I wish I could dance with him. Yeah, I, mean, I don't want to stop your eating. I want to stop your eating. So we can only fit six people on the screen at the same time, so we can't even get the whole cast. We're going to be going in and out, but you just enjoy that. <laughs> What's happening? I can't. Um, let me bring back. Let me bring on some of the cast. I guess if we can't bring them all, I'll tell you who I'm not bringing. Let me bring on some of this the one. Oh, I guess if we can't bring them all, I'll tell you who I'm not bringing. Matt, I'm going to kill you. Why did you kill your girl? And by the way, why did you kill your girl? How about this? Hi right, guys, this is Matt's mom. <laughs> How about this? Hi guys, this is Matt's mom. <laughs> wow, we gotta. Oh my god! <laughs> Someone worked with Matt. Well, Someone. Okay, well, Matt needs an ASM of his own. <laughs> Where was I? Okay, let me bring on some of these clowns. So why don't I bring on? He goes. Oh. He goes as PJW. I know him as Patty. <laughs> you know him as Jerry Lukowski. Patrick Wilson. Hi, Patty. Hi, Patrick. How are you guys? <laughs> Do you have an endorsement deal also with that cup? Like, oh, I, I wish. No, this is coffee. Actually, it says Warszawa. My wife is Polish, so oh. we have a lot of Polish trinkets. And <laughs> Are you drinking oh, coffee this hour? I am. I had dinner. Actually, they all, they they meaning uh, my mother in law, sister in law, niece. They all made uh, pierogi today. So, like, spent mm. the whole day making homemade pierogi. So that's mm -hmm. what we just had. I guess you're. On carbs right now. Good for you. A car bloating. I'm running a marathon tomorrow morning. So it's all good. Okay, now I'd like to bring a wonderful country singer, Mr. John. The lemons eating from everybody. They're Legos, actually. I just thought you brought such a strong Brando and Apocalypse vibe. Yeah, but. See, more uh, Rorschach. There it is. Okay, you got to go. Yes, back. You're out. Now, like, he's a very gifted dancer, though. He's gifted. I'm bringing up an uptight businessman, Mr. Marcus Neville, who's chowing down. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Hello, fellas. Good to see you all. Hi, Marcus. What a beautiful background. Where, where, where is your house? Is stunning. I'm in uh, Vermont. I'm in Weston, Vermont. You've heard of the Weston Playhouse in Weston, Vermont. I can see it out my window here, wow. and uh, been out of town for a couple of weeks and hunkered down in beautiful Vermont, where it was 70 degrees today. Wait a minute. Were you doing a show there, and then this is like your cast house or something? No, kind of bugged out. Live, have a home here. Have a home away from home. Got a home off of uh, off of Gramercy Park and got a home here, uh, and uh, and came here just in time to learn that we're canceling our season. Uh, uh, but tell uh, them your involvement. You like say what? well, you run the whole thing basically. No, no, I, I've been on the board of directors for about ten years, and well, I try to act in a show or direct a show. And this summer we were going to do um, uh, Kinky Boots. And Michael Barres was going to direct, and I was going to maybe reprise my role of George uh, 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 in the Kinky Boots, and was really looking forward to that. So I don't run the theater. I'm just the CEO. Excellent. Okay, and no thanks, Patrick. I'm on your side. The, the denial is mind-boggling. Okay, now let me bring up Horace himself. You know him from... Amazing Andre the Shields. Yeah. <laughs> Anti the Shields. Hey, 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 hey. Gentlemen. Not in front of Seth. <clears throat> Andre, where is your Tony Award? I thought you'd have it prominently displayed. Now, wait a minute. They shut down Broadway on March 12th. Yes. Right? Yes. I was just returning from Florida. So they said, go to your dressing room and get what you need. I didn't need the Tony Award. So it's there, waiting for me. It's very Buddhist of you. Your yeah, material possessions, I approve. Yeah, I, can't, I can't live with craven images. It's going to lure you back to Broadway. Okay. And you can't bring on every single... So wait, I have room for... Wait, who do I, God, this stupid... 
So let me bring on Rome. Okay, hold on. Here's little Roman or Romaine. Hi, Rome. Rome. <laughs> oh, hey. There we go. I'm on tequila. <laughs> hey, Roman, are you in Providence? Uh, Thomas, what's that? Are you in Providence town? No, I'm in uh, Hyde Park, New York, where I live. Okay, now, first of all, just let's settle it. Is it Romaine or Roman? Because I've heard both. It's both things. Romaine is my real name. Roman is sort of a nickname that people started calling me some years back. Simple. And Romy. And Romy. Romy likes to call me. Okay, we're going to call on the other people as we move along. But let me first talk to you clowns. So I'd love to know how everybody got the part. Patrick, I'm trying to remember, we, were, we did Harmony in 1997. So this was like... I don't think you've done a Broadway show, right? Because you went from Harmony. Was Full Monty like your first big lead? Uh, yes, it was. It was not my my first Broadway show. Was with I'll point to you, Marcus. Where are you, uh, Michael Barres? In fascinating the rhythm. Um, but this was I saw fascinating rhythm. It was really wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> wake up! Wake up! <laughs> um, and uh, no, you know, so I had. Um, I did a play at the Old Glow at, at La Jolla in the fall. And I remember, and I only bring that up because when they were auditioning for uh, Full Monty, I thought, I don't know if I want to go back to San Diego. It was literally just about the location. Like, I don't know <laughs> if I want to go back to San Diego. I was just there for like four months. And then I thought, wait a second, that's, this is such a great part. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. The rest is history. So I, so I spent that whole, whole year, basically. I did um, Sweeper of Youth. That's what it was. At, uh, at, La, at La Jolla. Did you have to audition for Full Monty? Or was it Yeah, awesome? yeah. Yeah, I went in and I guess read and sang. I don't remember what I sang. I don't think I sang anything particularly high. I think we sort of discovered where the score would sit, as I think everybody would say. You know, Yazbek always wanted to write like at like the top of your range. It was the first guy that I had ever heard say that. Like he didn't want it to be comfortable because nothing was comfortable about these guys about their lives. So mm. every one of us was sort of mm. like stretching it out, you know? Wow. So that was a, uh, yeah. That was a high ass note. And John Conley, so you gave up country no. singing to come to Broadway? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I started in ballet and then went from there to country music. And then the natural third movement from there, mm. Broadway musicals. So, yeah. Yeah. And then ballet, oh, you're on phone right, John. So hold on, did you have to audition also? I did um, for David. I I was doing a show that I I knew I would never live to regret, which was an episode of a television program called Cosby. <laughs> and I got a call. <laughs> Patrick, I got a call um, that Terrence McNally wanted me to do a reading of a musical of the Full Monty, and I thought, oh, I really don't want to do a movie based musical. This sounds awful. But I appreciate that Terrence had specifically requested me, which I think only happened because of Jack. Jack, I had auditioned for Jack a bunch of times for other things as a super baby-faced character man, always for the wrong things. And he had always said, you know, you're such a great actor, I can't hire you for this because you don't look anything like you need to look. Um, and uh, so then they said, you know, but you'll have to sing something for Yazbek because he doesn't know you. And I, Sort of thought, oh, all right, I'll, I won't prepare anything, but I'll bring my book in. And I went in, and <laughs> Yesbeck went through my whole book, and he he looked at it, through it, and he was like, oh, <laughs> oh no, just went through the whole thing, and then finally goes, all right, do sit down, you're rocking the boat, but do it angry, and no vibrato. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh, hold on, here we go. Okay, hold on. <laughs> yes, Beck? Oh, no, what? We need to talk about your weird obsession with straight tone. What is that about? Have you heard Stevie Wonder? Wait, make <laughs> people amazing. Go. What's my obsession? That people are not allowed to vibrato because it's it's pop if you're straight tone, but if you vibrato, it's Broadway. What is that based on? Just for this, just for this show and for certain characters. I mean. You know, I mean, 
Patrick allowed himself to to uh, indulge in vibrato at the end of certain notes, as I recall. Yes, I recall. Um, I beg Andre, him to. Andre can do whatever the hell he wants to with that voice, but okay. John Olson Connolly, when he is not dancing on toe, is someone you have to control. That's a voice you need to control. Yeah. Did, what are you holding in your arms, dear? <laughs> yeah, you. My, my peaches. The, uh, the other arm. Millions of peaches. Oh. His Emmy. Oh, the Tony. Oh, the award. Oh, you might maybe mean the Emmy Award? <laughs> or maybe it's the Grammy? <laughs> you know, Andre had the decency to leave his at the theater. Take care. I've had it with him. <laughs> Conley, Conley, you sang Sit on Your Rock in the Boat. You yes. still toned it for some reason, whatever. And as instructed. Yeah, and then he was like, "Let's do this," and I did a I did a workshop of it, and then fortunately never had to do the stripping audition that some people had to do. You Wait, didn't have to strip. No, because I did that first workshop. Okay. All I had to do was audition for Yazbek. Wait, who had a strip in an audition? I did. Andre, you did? go. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was just. <laughs> I just <laughs> yeah. I just finished doing. Yeah, but you asked to strip at your audition, Andre. Is no, right? I did not. I just finished doing a production of Waiting for Godot, Vladimir. So I was in the right psychological mind to audition for <laughs> the full Monty. And Clark Peters and I made it to the final cut. You know Clark Peters? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And, and he said to me as he was leaving the room, you're gonna get this. I said, okay, I got it. Wait, where's where's the strip audition story? <laughs> Jack O'Brien was terribly, terribly, uh, what can I say, fatherly about this because he wanted us to understand that he wasn't a voyeur or anything like that and that he would take care of us while we were doing the strip and they closed the doors and they put a partitions in the room and there was Clark Peters and I and the pianist doing some kind of rumba sort of thing. And Clark went down to his t-shirt and uh, shorts and I went down to my tidy whities and was about to take them off. <laughs> Jack said, oh no, no, that's enough, that's enough. <laughs> yes, sir. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> Roman, what do you have to do? Do you know, I didn't audition for the Full Monty because- Am I the only one who auditioned for the Full Monty? Well, I think some of the guys did, but um, I had done Floyd Collins at the Old Globe right before this. And so Jack knew me from that and asked me to do the first reading. Um, I don't even know if Patrick knows this, but I had done his part in Phoenix a fascinating Ooh. before that came to Broadway. I was right, back yeah. off, back yeah. off. So oh, that's that same that's yeah, in fact, I think your track you sang we sang um uh Embrace Me, my sweet embraceable you, right? Yes. Um, and I left that show to do Floyd Collins in San Diego. And so they had to find somebody. You did fascinating rhythm and then in Phoenix, and then Patrick, you got to do the full two weeks on Broadway. Two and a half. <laughs> falsettos and they said can you come back later and dance and Patrick was there and a bunch of us guys did basketball moves and we did a little ballroom yeah. dance with some gals and then they said everyone leave the room Marcus stay uh, and they said Zane is going to play something on the piano show us how your character might strip and ah. that was all the direction I got and I went and I went and no one said stop. See? So I thumbs in the in the band of the underwear and <laughs> they all stood up behind the table scream, don't do that, we're gonna get in trouble. But right, right. Got the you job. Good pay? <laughs> Speaking of basketball, I think, <laughs> hold on, do I have? Michael Jordan. Yeah. 
Fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, I missed that. Look at this sweet picture that Marcus sent in of everybody. Yeah. Bandanas. There's story <laughs> behind the bandanas. Where was that? That was recording. We were, we were uh, prophesying. Was... We were prophesying COVID nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> Just move, move the bandanas down. Yeah, right, there we go. I've got to hear about Jason's audition where they okay. actually let him take the full underwear off. So I'm gonna get rid. I mean, who? Wait, hold on. Let me. This is so hard because we only have six. Get people. rid of me, John. No, John. Get rid of me. Back. Hold on, John. I'll bring you back, and then I'm gonna bring on Jason. Danieli rhymes with annually. Hi, Chase. Hey, John. Hey guys. Hi, Jay. Hey. So speaking of vibrato, the last part you had played was we'll build our, you know, make our garden grow. Right. So how did you get the gig? They probably thought you were a big opera singer. <laughs> um, well, uh, I knew Terrence, and he said, I'm writing this show, and I've been thinking about you while I was writing it. And, oh, that's nice. And want to come in and sing for Yazbek, because he doesn't know who you are, and so <laughs> Sang something, and it was all very. It was that um, I think Johnny and, and Roman and I and maybe Annie Golden, maybe were the only people who did like the first reading, and then we were just like holding on for dear life that we didn't have to <laughs> re audition and take off our clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and you never oh, had to. No, didn't have to. We did the workshop. Actually, it was a reading. And it was one of those sneaky things we were at. Remember Raw Space down on 42nd Street? Yes, I remember Raw Space. We did like a week reading. We did the reading. And, you know, when the reading's over, everyone leaves. You know, high fives. And Jerry Mitchell said, hey, guys, can you just stick around? Um, we're going to dance. You're like, you've got to be freaking kidding me. We're supposed to be walking out the door. So we get, I don't we didn't even bring things to to. Where I don't think, but then we, we were imp improvising basketball moves for Jerry, so we had imaginary basketball and we're throwing it around and all stuff like that. So, um, it was kind of a workshop in a way, but no stripping, thank god. And you kept the role the whole time, yeah. It wasn't one of those like one workshop, someone else did it type of things. Anybody, anybody ever like miss a workshop where you all got to play the role all the time? Uh, didn't do the original workshop. Did the uh, uh, did the staged reading, and then we went to San Diego. I didn't do any. And Terrence at the staged reading, Terrence read the read the uh, uh, parenthetical uh, line, and he was perfect. Oh. He got laughs. He was perfect. Uh -huh. Sweet, <laughs> Marcus. I was thinking about your uptight background harmony in a big black man. Do you remember your stupid? <laughs> <laughs> Well, he also gotta love a big yeah, black man. Yeah, <laughs> it was so stupid. Did it in rehearsal one day, and David Yazbek said, "Thank you, please put that in, and tell everyone that I put that in there." Oh wow, you came up with it yourself? Yeah, I was listening to uh, "I Got Five More Miles to Go" by Edwin Starr or something. Edwin Starr. Edwin I think it was in my head. That sort of background singing thing. Yeah, it made Kathleen Freeman laugh. So, speaking of which, laughed, look at this lovely photo. Uh, so let's let's yeah. talk about let's talk about Kathleen for a second. So, for people, oh, that's so wonderful. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful photo. I love that. You know, photo. once we were standing upstage behind the flat, uh, five of us guys and Kathleen, we'd make our entrance into the final uh, number. She'd come out and introduce us, and then we'd come out deer in the headlights. And, and uh, uh, she was in her, she was in her top like this, just adjusting. <laughs> and I said, "What do you got going on in there, sister?" <laughs> she said, "Up to five years ago, I would have shown you, but now Roman curtains." <laughs> If people don't know, Kathleen had cancer during the actual run of the Full Monty, right? Yeah, she was yeah. having uh, radiation therapy uh, regularly, but only stage management knew, and and of course, uh, company management, and she would come, because I, I brought her on for her entrance, and she would, you know, 
come into stage left wing, sit on a stool and just like close her eyes and focus. And I say, okay, yeah. Well, she knew what her cue was. She just opened her eyes and she just mustered all the strength from the center of the earth. And she went out, how? You know, just, <laughs> it, it, it gave it and then she'd come off and she'd just collapse. I mean, not collapse to the floor, but she would just like be exhausted. I was, yeah. really, we learned a lot from her about comedy. Oh yeah. And, and, and just doing it. Just a few minutes. I found this clip. There's so much amazing mugging going on. Cause it's not like it's the biggest laugh lines, but boy, she knows how to work it. Listen to this. <laughs> There's so much going on there. What happens when you work with Jerry Lewis for like 15 films? Right, true. Oh, how to mug. I have to ask David a question. Now, by the way, don't forget, people, I keep forgetting to remind you, you got to donate to Stars in the House. I'm getting these emails. Then you have to send a receipt to Stars in the House 2020 at Gmail and then eventually send back to us. Hold on, I'm going to bring on David for a second. Um, David, he, um, I think he's preoccupied at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you get these props. David, where did you come up with that amazing line for Kathleen in the middle of uh, Things Could Be Better when it's just finally like, let's face it, we suck? Um, so. You know, that was one of those songs that has a, a chorus that is so repetitive that it, it started feeling like it was getting boring. And uh, things could be better, that it could be better, things could be better. And if you can get away with it once or twice. And Sperling, Ted Sperling, who is the musical director, said, why don't you do that thing where you just add a line instead of, you know, singing the line? And, and that's, that is, that's where it's came, it came from. But, you know, I mean, I'm a comedy writer, too. And it was just very clear that by the end of the song, if she just ends on the word suck it, we get a big laugh. <laughs> Here she is. Such a great moment. Hey, my dudes. Smith used to say about a bad rehearsal oh. usually means a bad performance. Hey, <laughs> hey David. How about so a lot of the people here you didn't necessarily know when they came in an audition, but you did you know who she was? Yeah, I did. I mean, I I I knew who Andre was. I didn't know who any of these guys were. Um, but Kathleen, um, you know, the nutty professor, uh, the, the, mm. the real, the original one. Is still one of my favorite movies, and um, she is great in that and in all the other Jerry Lewis movies. And just, I'm such a fan of that exact type of actor, like Arnold Stang, or you know these comic character. Act well, they're not really character actors. They're they're like, although she really could play a lot of different types. Um, but um, she uh, here's something you didn't know about Kathleen Freeman. She was Samantha Eggar's acting coach in the movie The Collector, which is sort of a harm, uh, sort of a weird psychological thriller. Like she would coach, I forget what studio it was, but she, they would hire her to coach other actors. Um, and I had, I had great conversations with her about pausing one extra second to get uh, rolling laughter, like these very technical conversations that, um, <clears throat> That were fascinating. You know, she was just such a pro. Wow. She uh, so understands that. Um, I want to talk for a second about the relationship between Roman and Jason. I never saw the original movie. So that's actually in the movie that they're a gay couple in the movie. Well, they, there's yeah. that moment. 
Yeah, there's a moment where they sort of discover each other in the same similar way. Yeah. It's called British gay. It's British gay. <laughs> Andre is hilarious. It says so many things. Um, okay, well, we tried to make this whole, we tried to do the duet version of the song today, but but Roman's one of those like, I'm unplugged and didn't get the email till like five o'clock. I'm retired and gardening, man. I don't know. Are, are, are you growing cannabis? Growing what? Yeah. Cannabis. Marijuana. Yeah, oh, hell yeah. Okay, before this song, Patrick Wilson, because Jason's going to sing it. I suppose he just got a couple of names because people are slowly sending them in. Hold on. I just slowly got it. Patrick, I'm going to text you and then I'm going to have you read these names. Text um, me a while. Jason's singing first. Well, I was going to do it right before the song, but I got it really <clears throat> quickly, but I guess I'm not. No, I think. All right, so Jason, why don't you recreate the song? <laughs> this happens in Act Two. It's during the funeral of your mom, and then halfway through, you and uh, Roman connect together. And we'll just do it as a solo. All right. I'm well, sing for my room, though. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I wish you guys could sing together, but it doesn't work with this platform. Oh, no, no, no. Am I on? Okay. Is it the wind over my shoulder? Is it the wind that I hear gently whispering? Are you alone there in the valley? No, not alone, for you walk, you walk with me. Is it the wind there over my shoulder? Is it your voice calling quietly over the hilltop? Down in the valley, never alone, for you walk with me. When evening falls, and the air gets colder, when shadows cover the road I am following, will I be alone? There in the darkness, no, not alone, not alone, and I'll never be, never alone, for you walk, you walk with me. Is it the wind there over my shoulder? Is it your voice calling quietly over the hilltop? Down in the valley, never alone, for you walk with me over the hilltop. Down in the valley. Never alone, for you walk with me. Never alone, for you With me, Miss Jerome. <laughs> Beautiful. I missed it. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Um, that was extraordinary. You know, <clears throat> challenge. Like, um, I think it was Patrick saying that. Yeah, I'd like to, you know, right at the top of your range and. Hmm. Although I, I do have a lot at the, at the top, it's 
he, you know, really wanted to be a Simon and Garfunkel song. And the putting on the, the brakes, you know, you just want to go over the hilltop, you know, yeah. <laughs> and like, but it's like, you know, that it doesn't work that way. I mean, I didn't until I did it and went, oh, that doesn't feel right. Mm. And letting it be so very simple and letting it, I mean, it, it was such a study in, in stagecraft because Patrick and John were downright behind, removed from the, the funeral. And Roman reached forward and grabbed my hand when I would break down toward the end of the song. And John had this really tricky line. Look, I can't remember what it is like, look, they're holding hands. And Patrick says something like, yeah. And and I forgot what the second line is, Johnny, you, you would remember, but I know that you, you felt like you had to deliver it to your shoes or it would get a laugh. Right. Just because it's so uncomfortable. Yep. And, but of course- Patrick, John, said, Patrick said, good for them. And then John said, I don't hold, I don't hold hands with George. I don't hold George's hand. Yeah, I don't even hold George's hand. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a testament to the relationship of all these actors that Johnny knew that he needed to deliver this line to his shoes. You know. Look, some people have a gift for not getting laughs, and I'm one of those. Actors. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's hard. <laughs> Hey Patrick, before we go to Dr. Lapook, I sent you some uh, some donations. Yeah, like, we try to do them in groups of five. Did you get any? Look at your little iPhone or your Samsung, BlackBerry, <laughs> Rotary. Judith, oh, he's a yes. Palm Pilot. Judith from New York. Thank you, thank you. That's fifty one. Should I give the 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 amount? Yeah, no. just read it all. Sure. Well, you know, I don't want to make some people feel bad, but thank you, everybody, <laughs> for donating. No, five dollars is good for us. That's yeah, fine. No, like Seth said at the beginning of the show, it's it it, it, it five dollars is a minimum. Anything you can give, and uh, uh, this is unbelievable. Judith from New York, uh, fifty-one dollars. Louise from New York, twenty-five dollars. Ted from New York, I donated for this wonderful reunion, fifty bucks. Cheryl, twenty-five, donating donating again because David Yazbek is my favorite composer. The full month wow. is so much of this cast. Thank you very much. Joe from Baltimore, 36 bucks. Love from Baltimore City forever. Third donation. Proud of these men from, from Maryland. Andy Carl, not here. Brandon Victor Dixon, also not here. And Andre DeShields, who is yeah. here. But not on screen. And uh, but not on screen. Enjoying getting to all of you. Thank you, Joe. And Julie from Seattle, the last one, Seattle, Washington, 25 bucks in honor of David. AKA Tony Yazbek. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. By the way, people are really watching all over the world. Look at this. Um, this is for you, Jason. Hello from Japan. Thank you for the nice singing. Beautiful. Sweet. That's a big compliment. Thank you. We always have a medical correspondent. No joke. We have a medical section on the show. We have CBS Chief Medical Correspondent, Dr. John LaPook here. So I'm going to say peace out to you guys for a couple minutes. Stand by. So why don't you eat something, David? I know you must right. be famished. More, more peaches. And uh, we'll bring you back. Peaches. It is. So, these clowns. Who's trying to get in? And okay, hold on, Roman. You'll be back. You'll be back. You'll be back. <laughs> Everybody, say goodbye. Da, 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 da. Hi, Doctor John Lapook. Hi, Doctor Lapook. Hey, wow, that was beautiful. Good, good singing. Doctor Lapook, you got your haircut. I know you texted uh, me. Did. You know who did this? My wife Kate did this off of a video. <laughs> That she that she got online and uh, it looks great. You think it looks really good? Yeah, yeah, amazing, right? <laughs> she was she it, you know she took a it took a while. She was the first time she had ever done a haircut, but she did a beautiful job. Don't you think? Still yeah. got it. So yeah. oh my god, very even. So what's the latest update? We know the good news. We saw you on CBS Sunday morning about the good news, which is great about the new drug. Yeah. But, right. What let's say I'm in a state where the governor is like, hey, we're gonna open up the this and the this and the this. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to go? I guess it's safe. Yeah. So this is what I'm, I'm gonna be on CBS this morning tomorrow at 7:03 a.m. It's very carefully planned out, talking about this, um, or anyway, in the first 10 minutes, because um, this is all anybody's talking about uh, right now. Is how how do you know when it's safe to open up? And, you know, the CDC or, or the, the plan supposedly was, 
You have to see the numbers coming down for two weeks. And yet we're not seeing that consistently in, in these states that are talking about opening up. So the question is, well, what's the big deal, right? You just open up and see what happens. Here's the big deal, that unless we have enough testing, and that's the testing for whether you have the virus and whether you have the virus, how do we know what's happening? You can say, well, well, we'll see what happens. But that's what happened here originally, like in Washington State, for example, and probably in New York City, where it was spreading. We didn't realize it was spreading. And by the time people got sick enough to finally end up in a hospital, they were at death's door. So the whole plan, the whole idea of using the, the canary in the coal mine that Washington State and New York State have been is learn from that, say, OK, let's try to catch this early. And that means if you are going to open up, first of all, make sure that you're not, there aren't so many cases you're going to be overwhelmed that you can actually catch. Because, you know, once you get so many people having uh, COVID-19, how do you how do you find the contact of the contact of the contact? Right. So start at a low number. That's what we're trying to start at. That's that plan. And then have enough testing so that we're not waiting for people to get deathly sick. We're doing surveillance. And then if we say, ah, Look at you. You just tested positive. You had no symptoms. Now we're going to co do contact tracing. We're going to find out who you've been in touch with. And there are all sorts of really interesting ways that they're doing that, including iPhone, like what Bluetooth were you near? There's some issues of privacy there. But anyway, um, yeah. trying to figure out you know, who your contacts were, finding them. Old shoe leather, it's a very tried and true public health uh, technique. And then you know, getting those people quarantined, and then that's how you control it. Right now, we're saying each state is going to do their own thing. We have this thing called the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC. That's what they do for a living is they have these amazingly talented epidemiologists. They've been thinking their whole lives about this, people in the NIH also. So there's a lot of discussion about the wisdom of letting each state, not letting, I mean, they have the right to do it, I guess, but of, of having that be the, the plan to have each state do their own thing. Instead of having some central roll up all the data, let's see what, have one place that's looking around and saying, oh, that's over there, this is over here, and let's try to make one big plan as opposed to lots of little plans. So if I'm in one of these states that's opening up, how do I find out if it's safe to go out? Do I go to the CDC? Like, who's going to tell me the medical aspect of me going out? Here's the, here's the easy thing. No matter what the state says, no matter what anybody says, you still do all the things that everybody's been telling you to do, which is the six feet at least, wearing the mask, right. washing your hands. That's no matter what. That's if you have antibodies and you think maybe you're immune, maybe you're not immune. We, we're not sure. That's if you test positive or you test negative. You test negative, you say, I don't have it. Well, maybe you do have it, it's a false negative. So unfortunately, we're in this question mark, question mark, asterisk, asterisk time, play it safe, pretend that everybody's infected. Yeah. And I think that's the safe way to go. And then hope that we have some kind of coordinated national plan that makes sense of this. You know, right now, people talk about herd immunity. Remember that, like if enough people are immune, then the people who aren't immune won't get infected. That number, depending upon how infectious this is, whether that R naught number, how many people get infected by one person who's infected, if it's two to six. That means herd you need about 50 to 85% of the people immune before you're gonna get herd immunity. We're, we're likely nowhere near that. I mean, New York City was maybe 22% if it was right. correct. The rest of the country is, has been a lot lower. So that's where you are. A lot of questions, and I think public health figures are really, uh, there's a lot of friction that we're seeing in this discussion. Well, most importantly, my sister says, nice haircut, Dr. LeBouf. <laughs> and, someone, and someone else said, nice. <laughs> Woo! Uh, yay! You yeah. still got it. Yes. Okay. I'm so impressed. This is incredible. That was the first, this is the first one. So How long did it take, Kate? Not me. It took like an hour and 20 minutes. I mean, I, I it was scary. It was scary. Hour and 20 minutes. Okay. I'm not hiring you. No, All right. Video. My first colonoscopy was not, you know, let me just say, that's pretty amazing for a first. A first and on that note, <laughs> you'll be back tomorrow. Thank you, Dr. LaPoo. Bye. My Bye. first colonoscopy. Okay, Dr. LaPoo, I got to exit you from the studio because we have too many people. We have someone who's coming. Don't, don't be offended. Herbie Davis trying to get out. Yeah, let's see if I get him. All right. So now I want to bring back, because I want to talk about this one song. So I'm bringing back. The Hungriest Man in Town, David Yazbek, David. <laughs> Patrick, 
John and Jason. I want to talk about this one song. So, hey, Seth, um, Seth, yes. Before we talk about this song, I think I can raise a lot of money by reciting a poem I wrote last night. May I recite it? Yes. Don't forget, donate starsandhouse.com and email that receipt, starsandhouse2020, <laughs> in honor of this poem. This is a poem about really the what the real crisis is now. And that is the murder hornet, um, which I'm sure you've heard about. I'm so, freaking out. Yeah, I wrote a poem. It's called uh, Murder Hornet. Mm. Mm. Murder Hornet on my sweater. Mm. Murder Hornet, a real go-getter. Murder Hornet gets the chicks. Murder Hornet stings guys' dicks. Murder Hornet in your city. Murder Hornet guard your titty. Black and red, 10 feet long, laser eyes, giant schlong, be is dead. Who will mourn it? Murder hornet? No! <laughs> That's incredible. Um, Mark McCullough is snapping. <laughs> and Andre de Shields is nodding approvingly. <laughs> yeah, you need a little diversity on that screen. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I said all the ethnic types should be auditioning, and thank God you showed up. Okay. So, I want to talk about um, a couple of things I want to talk about. So first of all, um, I'm the only Jew. I'm the only Jew. Can we look at this face? Other than you, I mean, in this, in the cat, in the group. In this no, group. no, no. I'm a black Hebrew. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Double diverse. Andre Schwartz. <laughs> anyway, David dear, okay. I want to talk about big ass rock and what an oh. odd, odd song that is. What odd comedy that is, because it's it's so playing against it. Like, how did it all come together? It's such bizarre mm -hmm. comedy. Uh, jeez, um, you know that's bizarre comedy is good comedy as far as I'm concerned. You know, oh, yeah. the stuff that comes from left field and. Uh, but also, if you're writing it as a song, it has to. You have to have a. You know, you've got you got to have to tell a lot of jokes. So once you once you set up the kind of obtuse comedy it is, you got to deliver. You know, over and over again. So the the concept of the I think the first thing that, that came to my mind was to do a soft rock ballad. Um specifically like a Carol King type type of ballad. And um, that's how it started. And then to come up with just the most twisted, violent images. And there's just nothing, <laughs> there's nothing worse than just the concept of someone with a giant rock smashing it down on your head while you're lying on the ground. I mean, <laughs> um, and then just like pulverizing your entire head so that now you've just got a rock. We got it. Oh, got it. <laughs> that sounds about empathy. Yeah, people don't know. Basically, Jason Danley is depressed, out of work, and he's trying to commit suicide. So Patrick and John stop the suicide, and they say, we'll be your friends. You were doing a bad job. We'll help you cure yourself. But and it's actually a joke. They're basically making light of it, trying to destigmatize the shame and throughout it, by the end of the song, they've all become friends. It's really very craftily written. Let's take a gander. In the movie, like Oops, series, in the movie, what happens? Oh, I'm sorry. In the movie, it's just a series of like three jokes. It's just like we'll do this, or we'll do this, or we'll do this. See, don't tell us, you know, you don't have friends, and that suggests a list song in a way, you know, not a classical list song, but um, but also I just remember just the word friends is what got me onto. Carol King. You got, you got a friend and Carol yeah. King. And then or Carly Simon. Then Jason sings it in the bridge. <laughs> I've, I've got a friend like Carol King. Or was or it Carly, Carly Simon? Simon used to sing. And then I would get up. those two mixed up. Yeah. I would get way. those two confused. But anyway. I, mean, which, I do, Grant. I love that it was actually just delivered perfect, perfectly. What's an amazing lyric? It's like such a waste of time. It's like I always get those two. Like, oh it's Shut a up. waste of time. It's a waste of time. That's <laughs> a hilarious lyric. Okay, wow. here it is. Here's some of the song. Let's find a rock. I mean a big ass rock. Let's find a 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 rock
You'll see my smile and you'll know you've got a friend. <laughs> so it's so. I, I don't know if you could hear it, but um, uh, when I did the uh the demo for that, I um, I made sure to use an actual recorder. Pan, that yeah, pan food, yes. Yeah, <laughs> but I an ocarina, yeah. or but that was in the in the sort of early seventies. That was such a uh, shorthand mm. for childish innocence, you know. Uh, anyway, I, I'd forgotten that until I just heard. heard yeah, that. Good, we, great didn't the, we didn't get to the bridge where you were you were referencing about Carol King or Carly Simon, but one day on Broadway, we're at curtain call, and Roman is standing next to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Said, Carly Simon's in the audience. Said, Carol King. <laughs> Carol King was in the audience, and we thought it was Carly Simon. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do look alike. <laughs> and it wasn't like he wasn't, I don't, I mean, maybe Roman would, you know, we have to ask him, but I, I think he Hold honestly on. thought it was Carly. And then it was. Hold on, I'm going to ask him. Hold on. on. He's wrong, Roman. wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> Roman, you're friends with her, right? No, I'm not friends with her. But my good friend, Denise, is her hair colorist, Carol King's <laughs> hair colorist. <laughs> you were playing me. My friend Denise brought Carol King to the show. So I wouldn't have mistakenly think it was Carly Simon because I knew it was Carol King. I must have said, hey, Carol King's in the audience. <laughs> you you introduced me to her and on the street and uh, I was a little sheepish because she's a hero of mine. And I thought, uh oh, she might not take it, you know. And then she just said, she said like, oh, people do that all the time. Like they confuse the two, which is right. right. Which is like, Carol King is one of the great American songwriters ever, and Carly Simon is a, a great singer, but not, you know, not Carol. Oh, come on, wait, 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 wait. Carly <laughs> Simon's a pretty fucking great songwriter. Carol Simon is an amazing songwriter. Carol, Carol King, but, is, Carol Carol King, King is, like the, is like the Beatles, you know? Like, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, no, mean, I don't mean to put down Carly Simon. Let's just make them both equal. You got to listen to I No Secrets. at night. Well, she didn't write that. So she didn't write it. She didn't write that now. Oh, wrong, wrong, wrong. I, 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 I have fond memories of yeah. masturbating to playing possum to the cover of. And that. on that note, <laughs> <laughs> so wait a minute before you before you before you dismiss David Yazbek, may I drop a little ego bomb here? Oh, you no! Know, last year in November, when I received the Oscar Hammer sign the second. Life Achievement Award for Musical Theater, David Yazbek, Patrick Wilson, and John Conley sang that song in honor of Moi. So I know, that's sweet. It, 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 was, was, it. it was a great night. It was a really Yeah, it was. It was. I, and night. I told it, him, oh, Yeah, it was a good night. Andre, I have a clip. Well, everyone's in their underwear, but Andre, you are strutting around in your underwear in this clip. Um, <laughs> no. Well, you'll see. And Patrick, this is, you actually get your vibrato in at the very end. <laughs> she, here, I love it. Take a look at this girl. That's everything I like. She got the face, she got the waist, she got the legs. Now I'm attention to make me crazy. Bodacious fun bags are a must. They gotta be C or D or better. They got to pose up right to the sweat tub. <laughs>
<laughs> that was harder than the trip doing that number. I wanted the second part, Andre, but it wasn't online. But I will, David. I don't know if you know this story, but maybe you'll you'll appreciate it. Oh. Patrick was there. I was in. I was playing that night in New York, playing one night in the band, and I was reading an article about Vietnam, and I was like, "Would I have defected to Canada? Like, I wouldn't want to fight." And I was really thinking it through. And while I was thinking, whoever the drummer is, I can't remember. He started practicing, and I was like, "Why is he practicing?" I'm like, "We can hear you through the headphones." I was so annoyed at him, but he wasn't practicing. The song had begun, and literally the beginning of that song is just piano and drums. You know, it's. Um, <laughs> But I was thinking about Vietnam, so instead of the piano, it was literally just the drums. So poor Patrick just heard like, <laughs> no piano, and then Patrick like, take a look at this. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was so <laughs> devastated. Just was so he in tune? Was he was in the right tune. That was Dean Sharon now playing drums, no doubt. Problem, yeah, problem. right. I was mortified. Wasn't fired, but mortified. Um, <laughs> I'm just shield. Your dancing was so fierce in that. Did you choreograph any of that yourself, or was that all Mr. Mitchell? It was not all Mr. Mitchell. It was a lovely collaboration. But I'm older than he, hmm. so my lexicon of references was a little more true. Well, you also helped me write the song. I mean, you suggested, you know, I I, I threw in some dance names. Yeah, of right. You suggested a bunch of, uh, you know, you know, classic. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I appreciate you allowing me to do that. Yeah, what are what are all the dances that you reference in that song? They're hilarious. Well, the uh, uh, sure. well, the first part is get back and let a man do the popcorn, and then we do, <laughs> and then we do the jerk, and we do the twist, and we do the uh, Uncle Willie, and we do the monkey. The monkey, yeah. I love we do a lot of things. And then we do the face. Which was everybody's popular most popular movement, I thought. Isn't the jerk pronounced differently? Joik. Joik, yeah. It is the joik. Do the joik. Yeah. Hell? It's the joik. Okay, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna pray to God that Matt Stern is not echoing. David, take care for a second. Oh, oh, oh. Right. I just want to on the, while we were on that song, I just wanted to say I, I think I told this at your at your um, award thing, Andre. But you know, I didn't. Th this was my first show, and I just didn't know what audiences would respond to or not. But there was this moment when I realized that we were going to have some degree of a hit, and that moment is when I first uh, saw Andre doing Big Black Man. Like I heard him do it, I saw him do it, and I was just like, "Oh, all right, well, you know, we maybe one more good song in the second act, and we'll be cool." <laughs> so why aren't we doing that tonight? <laughs> yeah, it was so yes, good. Beck. Yes, Beck. Yeah, what? Why aren't we doing that tonight? You know what? I, I have nothing to do with this, Andre. No. I was going to ask you, but then I was like, "Oh, there's no way he'll be able to dance it." That's true. But wait, I want you to come back and do it. What if I record it? Could we, could we, I would so want to see you do it again. If I send you a track, would you be able to film yourself? I want all those moves. Go. You know what? I also got intimidated because it was all that repeated measure. And I was like, how can I repeat it? Okay. So I'm going to talk to you, talk to you. I'm bringing your ass back because I really, I need to see that again. So <laughs> Please bring my ass black. I'm, <laughs> you need to cut. Okay. There ain't nothing in the world like a big black man. That's yeah. That's that placement. <laughs> I love a big black man. Okay. Here comes Matt Stern. Matt, Matt. Matt Stern. It's great to see you. Okay. Okay. I don't know. 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 <laughs> Take care, Matt. Bye. Matt, Matt, go, out, bye. Matt go out and then come back in. Yeah. We'll try it one more time. You can try to come back to the studio. <laughs> so, so sign out and sign back in. So I'm gonna call. Okay, hold on. So wow. So here's here's the Nevs. Can't say we didn't try. I mean, Mike. So let's yeah. talk about let's talk about the Tony Awards. What the hell was the Tony Awards like? No, we. I was just gonna say we didn't talk about the Tony Awards or when we performed in London for the Queen for the Royal Variety. Right. Uh, it's a television show, so the house is lit. <laughs> you have more bright lights in front of you than you do behind you. 
you know, Jack and Jerry and the gang really designed a really nice, tasteful ending of the show with lights behind us and a grand silhouette. But when you're doing a television show, there's no distinction other than the camera in the center. So if you get a chance to uh, search online and find uh, the full Monty at the Tonys and look at people's reactions, and know that the people's reactions are because what they actually did just see. Wait, was that the Tonys yeah. or the Queens thing? Oh, it's a oh, television yeah. show too. So the it's house is good. lit as bright as the stage because they're going to take cutaway shots. Yeah. Plus, yeah. Were, Tonys were like in full thrust, like way up in front, before, in front of the proscenium. Right. The right. Yeah, yeah. Thrust. I don't know about you. Yeah, I, I did the half thrust. But <laughs> <laughs> you're also... What was it? Did you think anyone in the audience saw what was like? Yes, yes, yes. There's a, there's a cutaway to uh, Blythe Danner and uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. They're like, hey, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna watch. Hold on, you have to find it. Let it go, let it go. Loosen up, yeah, let it go. <laughs> Jason up so wait I, I had the ending with the pouch oh, oh, oh you got it. Here we go. I had the pouch with, with the uh, with the shock at the end. <laughs> wait, hold on. She was watching me, by the way. And Bancroft. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so listen, wait. I want to do something right after this, but first we got to get to Patrick. Uh, Patrick's going to do a duet. We can't sing with John Connolly yes. because you can't sing on two different things. So Patrick's going to do a duet with the other guy living with him. <laughs> um, so I'm going to take us off screen. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to put on the original. I'm going to get rid of me. I'll put on the original John Connolly so he can see the way it should be done. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Playing the role of John Jellison Conley tonight. All right. Man yeah, of many faces. Can you guys see? Yeah. Yes. Can you hear us? Yeah. Yeah. Thumbs up. Can you hear us? Thumbs up. Okay. Thumbs up. Here right. But before we get started, here we go. Carol King gets her hair colored. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Apparently. Sorry. Go ahead. We're okay. here first. We need to okay. Okay. Here we go. You're out of work. Your pride is missing. They call you jerk, but you don't listen. You haven't got a pot to piss in, but you're a man. Your hands are rough. Your back is hairy. Your talk is tough. Your smell is scary. Here's what you're not. You're not a fairy. No, you're a beer drinking real life man. And when the beef comes out, you do the carving. You hate Tom Cruise, but you love Lee Marvin. You're a man. It's okay, then that's a bonus. Cause when you're swing and you're cojones, you'll show them what <laughs> testosterone is. Cause you're a boot wearing, beer drinking, Chevy driving man. Don't do it to be the most talked about man in New Jersey. Don't do it for all your friends. Don't even do it so your best friend, your father, can see, can keep on seeing his other son who he loves more than life. Do it for yourself, Cassie boy. Show him the stuff you're made of. Here it comes. 
Go. You've got these plans. What? They always fail. You've been divorced. You've been to jail. You may be bold. You may be male. What? But you're a bum. Bum, ba da, bum. That's not nice. You've got your dreams. But the wishes. And I don't want to sound malicious. But you're a nut. That's true. And I got dishes. I'm going home. Yeah, you already are home. I don't <laughs> hey, you'll come back. They always do. Not this time, Fabio. You don't even know who Fabio is. Yeah, he's a stripper. Surf's up, ladies. <laughs> Here comes Jerry Lukowski, the big kahuna, riding your pipeline. I'm hanging 10. Stand back, ladies. It's quarterback Jerry. Coming a long ball right into your end zone. Touchdown. <laughs> Want to go for two? <laughs> Base is loaded. It's bad boy Jerry swinging a big, a big old bat. Bop, 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 banging one right at you, baby. Booyah! I'm gonna jump straight up, kick a hole in the moon. Don't know exactly where I'm going, but I know I'm gonna get there soon. I'll show you. I'll show them all. I'll show them all the real thing. What is a man? Why does he bother? Cause he's a man, cause he's a father. He wants his kid, he wants his life. He wants to be, he wants to be a man, like a real man. Yes, I am, I'm gonna be, I gotta be a real man with a mission like you see on television. I'm a real fun, genuine. Ready, it's on. Yeah. Jeff's kiss, Cass. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, beautiful. I wish that guy had played it. <laughs> um. Okay. So hold on a second. I feel I felt bad about having the wrong um name in the promo because you know I Patrick I wanted you Jason I wanted you Andre I wanted you and and obviously this is who I actually wanted. So it's kind of perfect. <laughs> Tell me about Broadway. Look at all those go posters. I 23 and me us. I know. I uh, you know. I think we're first cousins. It turns out it, it's got to be something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how many people have asked me, "Are you related to David Yazbek?" You know, I'm. I uh, I hang out with Amy Yazbek. You know her, the actress. Yeah, she's wonderful. You know, the first thing she ever said to me when I when I first met her like five years ago or six years ago said, we may be cousins, so I'm not getting with you. That was like yeah. the first thing. But, you know, it's we, we we seem to be there seems to be a little area in Lebanon that, you know, anyway. Hi, There's a lot of musical theater talent in Lebanon. Because <laughs> um, yeah, you're like half Lebanese. And then I, I just found out my mother's a little bit Jewish. And I know you're are you half Jewish? No, yeah. I mean, well, according to the guys in the in the mitzvah tank, I'm 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 all Jewish because my it's matrilineal, and my mother's mother. But um, it would be, I mean, three quarters Semite, you know, <laughs> like Lebanese Jewish. Then there's a little Sicilian in there. So, but you got some Jewish in there, huh? Yeah, man, the good mix. You too, <laughs> um, Jason. I just sent you a text. Someone did some donations. We got some lovely donations. One in honor of the beautiful Mary Maisie. You'll see. It's so lovely. Take a gander. Don't forget, keep keep uh, donating. Stars in the house. I appreciate yeah. Tony, you coming so late. I'm sorry, I gave you the wrong link. Okay. Susan <laughs> from New Jersey, fifty dollars. A big thank you to Seth and James. It's wonderful. Cass and also my favorite composer, uh, Smiley from New York, one hundred three dollars. Is that our Smiley? It might be. He he actually player Smiley. Player. I don't know. Love you guys. You all look great. Pick it up. Dats, Lisa Dats, Allison and Shara from New York, $5. Saw the original Broadway company of the Full Monty 13 times. Thank you for this reunion of the best cast ever. Dave from Florida, $103. Thank you for the amazing Full Monty reunion and for that great performance from Jason. Thank you very much. Nicole from New York, $5 in memory of my grandma who adored the show. Thank you, everyone. 
And Robert from Illinois, $51. Thanks, guys, for celebrating a wonderful show in memory of Terrence and Marin. Ah, oh, that's lovely. Thank you all for those incredible donations. Um, tonight was amazing. Matt Sturm was phenomenal comic relief also. <laughs> Well, we've got to bring him in. Let's see if it works. So, yeah, if you Come don't on, know. Very, very so poor Matt was the Stacey. Bye-bye. Oh, my God. <laughs> Regardless, the active fund helps stage managers. So we wanted to support them. We did not know that Matt's technical skills. Go ahead, do skills. it one more time just for a laugh. So, Matt, Tonic's working yet? working yet. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, dear. Um, Okay. Oh my! You guys, gosh. it was a wonderful reunion. My favorite oh, was, was of course so the lovely Tony S. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't say goodbye to everybody. So I'll say goodbye to you guys. I bring everyone else on. Um, thanks everyone for donating. I know yeah. there's so many more donations. Um, Patrick, your second appearance. Thank you so much, Jason. Thanks, you're like, Patrick. Thank you, Jason. Jason. You're, by the way, you're, Jason, you're coming back. Just give people a prequel of why you're coming back. Tell everybody what they can do. Yeah, we'll be coming. I'll be coming back on next on this Friday. What's the date? I forget. Um, May 8th. May 8th, which is uh, World Ovarian Cancer Awareness Day. And I'll be coming on with uh, the CEO and uh, president of Cancer Support Community, which is an organization that Marin and I both advocated for, which gives over $40 million in free services to people who are living with um, cancer and their families to help them navigate insurance, finances, and now they have a hotline that's up seven days a week. So if you uh, are diagnosed with cancer and need to get to your treatments and are understandably afraid to, one, leave your house with your uh, immu immune system uh, compromised, you need to get to your chemo uh, treatments. Uh, so they have, tr um, maybe we'll set up a link. We'll definitely on Friday be talking all about that. And we'll be sharing um, uh, clips from the last concert that Marin and I did at 54 Below in uh, 2017, our upcoming DVD release, uh, Broadway and Beyond. So thank you guys for, for doing that. I look forward to raising some money for the cancer support community, which also Fantastic. works with, hand in hand with the Actors Fund of America. So um, that's great. It's all connected, cancer support community. Um, all right, so in conclusion, David, you're hilarious. It was just so fun. Andre, you have to come back. I'm yeah. going to send you that track, and I want to see the full everything. I'll be happy to come back. <laughs> <laughs> you got to cut. Okay, let me get this. So if you guys are saying goodbye to you, so you can say goodbye to the lovely John Conley. John, Thank you for having me. This was a blast. Your second, uh, your second appearance. Marcus, I'm going to say goodbye to you, so you can say goodbye to the lovely Roman Fouget. Good night. Good night. Hi, Roman. Say goodbye to you just so I can hear a horrific echo. <laughs> from echo from <laughs> <laughs> In conclusion, oh I'm going to hear. Let me see if I can, roll, see if I can roll the final credits. Oh, I feel like you have to have the composer on Tony Yale's back. <laughs> so, well, how can I roll? Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah where is it? I got to say goodbye to, gotta say goodbye never to Tony. Well, Tony. Composer and an amazing dancer. Yeah. Well, roll the final credits. Hey, hey guys. So Good. David Yasbeck is saying this. Oh, that was so much fun. It was, what? Yeah, I mean, it's just brilliant fun. Such a fun dad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.